I'm Action News Now reporter Margot Rowe with an live update on the progress of the Park Fire, which has now burned nearly a quarter of a million acres and is zero percent contained. Now, recently, Tehama County has declared a state of emergency, and we have been getting reports that the fire has jumped Highway 36. But I have checked in with Cal Fire, who you see behind me, and they are currently sending resources to confirm if the fire has jumped. But we are going to check with Incident Management Team Public Information Officer Edwin Zuniga. Um, can you just kind of describe us the firefight in terms of tonight going into the weekend? What are crews on the ground and in the air going to be working on tonight? Uh, yes, like you said, the the fire has burned 239,000 acres. We have approximately uh, 1,600 firefighters. More firefighters coming in, more resources that have been ordered throughout the state. Uh, going into tonight, obviously, we have a, a difficulty fighting the fire on the north end of the fire. We have gotten re some reports that the fire has crossed Highway 36. Right now, we have more resources heading up towards that area of the fire to confirm, also to assist the firefighters currently there holding the fire at Highway 36. So we'll know more information information on whether or not it has crossed Highway 36. We'll be able to confirm that later today. Uh, going into the weekend, obviously with the temperatures dropping, we're uh, expecting the humidity levels to also increase, which is going to allow us to be more aggressive going into this weekend and fighting this fire uh, and hopefully starting to get some containment on, uh, on the park fire throughout this weekend. Okay. And where will crews be working? I knew you mentioned bulldozers earlier uh, in terms of where they will be working on the map. Yes. So on the left flank, on the left side of the uh, fire, we have dozer lines that have uh, is they're holding on the south end. We're continuing to put those dozer lines towards the north end. Obviously, with the terrain being steep and rugged, it's a slow, ongoing process. But our dozers are going to be working around the clock to try to punch that dozer line in all the way to the north side. Uh, we also have firefighters scattered throughout Highway 32 on the south end, also holding the fire at Highway 32. Uh, but right now, I think our main focus is going to be Highway 36 with the reports that we're getting currently. Uh, we're going to want to confirm that immediately or uh, as soon as possible uh, and also have those resources help the resources currently there. Uh, to hold and continue to fight that fire at Highway 36. Okay. And then obviously going into the weekend with the weather, with the heat and whatnot, how can that help uh, fire crews or could it hinder them? Uh, yeah, well, the temperatures are going to drop, so that's going to kind of help us out a little bit. Uh, with the humidity levels uh, increasing, like I said, it's going to allow us to be a little bit more aggressive and more direct uh, with the firefight. Uh, as far as the red flag warning that we have uh, in effect right now, obviously we're a little bit worried about the winds coming in, into the area. Obviously, fire needs oxygen to, to continue to burn. So with the strong winds coming in, continuing to blow through this area, the fire activity is going to be probably around, around the same activity that we're seeing currently. Uh, but Hopefully with the humidity levels increasing, it's going to help us um, kind of maintain uh, and control that fire activity. Okay, thank you. And we will check in on those humidity levels and those wind, level, wind speeds with our chief meteorologist, Howie Gordon. Howie, how can the weather this weekend or going into night um, help fire crews or could they hinder them as well? Great job, Margo. Um, overnight tonight, we're still dealing with tough, tough conditions. But as Edwin was saying, the weekend is more promising, and I'm going to get right into that. Here's a look at the park fire. Here's what we have. So we got 16 mile per hour winds, but we're looking at 23, 24 mile per hour wind gusts. Now humidity levels have gone up a little, not really making a big difference at the moment. Here's a look over the course of the last 36 plus hours. So a lot of the hot spots starting to cool. Let's get closer to present day. You're still seeing a lot of hot spots out there, especially over the last 12 hours, again, where we're nearly 240,000 acres, over 239,000. Okay, humidity levels, these will increase over the weekend. More moisture in the air to suffocate the fire. Then, winds, winds provide oxygen to the fires. These winds over the weekend are gonna start to diminish. What is what I just said mean overall? A safer environment is on the way. We're still dealing presently and through tonight with strong wind gusts that make it very difficult to control this fire. Mother Nature has made it difficult, but Mother Nature is going to allow for our allow for this fire to be better controlled because we're going to start to see an improvement in our overall conditions. Red flag warnings after tonight, they are going to be lifted. And then here's a look at tomorrow. Here is what we have. These winds that are out of the south, at, southeast at 20 miles per hour, 
will slowly diminish throughout the day. This is in the morning. Look at the humidity levels pretty much doubling, and look at temperatures dropping down, making it easier for firefighters to get out there and try to further control this fire. We're still very dangerous, though. Fire weather, very high, very dry, and fires are raging. But we are looking at a more promising weekend and a safer weekend to control this fire. We're going to update you again on the hour, every hour, but now back to regular scheduled programming.